So hot you hurt my feelings. Can't deal. Oh. Hello, welcome to A Sunny Book Nook. Today we are a little bit more up close, but in the same kind of spot. Mostly because it's, the sun is like actively setting right now. So I need to be close to my window and you need me close to me to be able to like see my face and have the lighting be normal and okay. But anyways, welcome to A Sunny Book Nook. <laughs> My name is Sunny. I use they, them pronouns. Like, comment, subscribe, please. Um, <laughs> and yeah, today we're going to be doing my December wrap up. I am feeling energetic because I woke up an hour ago. It is, like I said, nearly sunset. So yeah, I'm, it's, it's going all right. But today I wanted to do part one of my December wrap up, mostly because the second half of my reading month in December was literally just romance novels. So <laughs> I wanted to like, make that a different video. Let's just get started. Uh, so the first book that I read in the month of December was Spirits Abroad by Zen Cho. This is a short story collection and Zen Cho, I would say is one of my favorite authors. I've read a couple of her books and this is my third one, I believe. And it really solid solidified why I love her books. Like they really engage with a lot of Southeast Asian, East Asian storytelling narratives and identities and families to portray magic and connection and relationships in a really beautiful way. And it's very speculative fantasy sci-fi, but also so real and mythological almost, fairy tale like but again, with a very, so grounded in like Asian culture and Asian spirituality and Asian folklore, it's stunning. And the short story collection is, I think pretty long for a short story collection. And almost every story in here I found really compelling, really interesting, and kind of the whole vibe of this short story collection will stay in my mind, even if the individual short stories won't. I find that in some short story collections, individual stories will stick in my mind, but the collection as a whole, I don't really remember the vibe of it. Others, the vibe is stronger than the individual stories. Others have like both, both elements of it are a little bit less memorable, but in this short story collection, I think the vibes as well as a few short stories that really stand out to me. I think my favorite ones or the ones that I'm really remembering right now, I don't remember the titles of short stories ever, but I really liked the one that was set in hell basically. And <laughs> there was a whole like bargaining system and hierarchy and bureaucracy in hell. And I thought that was really interesting. I also really liked the story about the girl who is a vampire and she falls in love with a boy because she's like kind of a loner. And that was really sweet and really cute. I, I enjoyed that one. And it had a horror bend to it, a horror element. I think a lot of these short stories kind of straddle a couple or a few genres. So yeah, I rated this book 4.5 stars. So many of these stories were so great. And I think Zen Cho is Malaysian and Chinese and um, I love that. I love that because I'm Chinese. The next book that I read in the month of December was another book by an Asian woman author actually and that is Light from Uncommon Stars. If you haven't already go watch my reading vlog where I read this it'll be up above and it is one of the opening round nominees of the sci-fi 2021 Goodreads Awards and it makes sense why. So our main character, well, we have a couple of main characters. One of the main characters is this Japanese violin prodigy who is really old and she sold her soul to the devil. Another one of the characters is a homeless trans girl who's just been kicked out of her house for being trans. And she's, well, she's not been kicked out. She's like run away from home. And basically these two characters like meet and within their meeting, there is a donut shop that is run by aliens. Uh, <laughs> it's really quirky, whimsical and sweet, but also very, like sci-fi, but not hard sci-fi. Not to further the distinction between hard and soft sci-fi in like a patriarchal way, but I think that this book really explores a lot of conversations about transness and racial identity and racial oppression and gender depression in a way that doesn't feel too on the nose, but feels really sweet. 
uh, genuine, legitimate. It was very delightful to read. And the author of this book is a trans woman as well. And she's also Asian. So that's a slay. <laughs> I noticed on the back that someone, one of the authors who read this book said, I wanted to give every one of her characters hugs. Fantastic, beautiful, and deeply, profoundly moving. Exactly, exactly. So true, Jen, Jen Lyons, author of The Ruin of Kings. I don't know what that is, but yeah. The next book that I read was another short story collection and that was That Way That Madness Lies by Dahlia Adler or edited by Dahlia Adler. This is a young adult short story collection retelling a bunch of Shakespeare plays. I did not like it, I rated it two stars. I thought that it was bad. Um, <laughs> but also maybe that's because, maybe that's because I'm just not a big YA reader. Maybe I've just grown out of it a little bit and I think that the writing style appealing to that audience isn't really my thing anymore. I just, I also think that most of these short stories were very weak, honestly. Like many of them were just not good in my humble opinion. But whatever, maybe you'd like it more than I did. So the next book that I read in the month of December was another book by a woman of color. And I guess she'd be considered Asian if you consider like Southwest Asia, North Africa uh, Asian because it's Mona Awad. And <laughs> I read 13 Ways of Looking at a Fat Girl. This is Mona Awad's debut novel, I'm pretty sure. And I've read all of her books at this point. Well, I DNF'd Bunny. I'm sorry, I know everyone fucking loves that book. In 13 Ways of Looking at a Fat Girl, we are looking at the stories of, I think, a few different fat women and their lives. I thought that it was very deeply poignant and moving, but also sharp, cutting, and disgusting and gross. Kind of Otessa Moshveg like. I mean, that's when people describe Moshveg books as gross, that's what I'm describing this book as gross because it just makes you feel icky, but it's also because of what the characters are going through as well as how they behave. There is like a storyline where a main character has a bunch of different like internet relationships and one of her internet relationships is with a man who is like paralyzed from the waist down. And I found their whole relationship so disturbing. I think that this was a, this was a really good book. I don't know. I think it explored mental illness and the reality of existing in a world as a fat woman, as someone who's considered undesirable and like the desires that one experiences so well. And yeah, I rated this book 3.5 stars because I don't think it really holds up to other books that I've read similar to this, but I still think that it's good, you know? Uh, but I rounded it up to four stars on Goodreads. The next book that I read in the month of December was a book that ended up on my top 20 list, but not in the top 10. And that is The Night Always Comes by Willie Vlaughton. I rated this book 4.5 stars. It follows this woman who is an ex-addict, I believe, and she experiences a lot of mental health issues because she's gone through a lot of traumatic stuff in her past. Look up trigger warnings. I mean, for all of these books, but particularly for this one, because it's absolutely brutal. This book follows her as she's trying to get ownership of her house, her like childhood home. And her mother is very old and jaded and her brother is disabled. And uh, it's just really tough for these three adults trying to live in this house there. And basically she's trying to get this house but her mom like backs out of it last minute and so she's trying to like, scramble together the money to get these funds to like buy the house or like, just live and so we follow her over the course of one night as she gets in a lot of crime and shit happens it is very disturbing and it is very much a shock to one's system in the way that it portrays the reality of poverty, gentrification, displacement, trauma, gendered violence, crime, and what that really means for the working poor, basically, in urban areas like Portland, Oregon, which is where this book is set. So yeah, I found it really compelling to read and it almost felt like a play because it was primarily dialogue and action. And that was what characterized the characters and like developed them as people as opposed 
to a description of them or a lot of internal monologue, if that makes sense. The next book that I read was Driftwood by Marie Brennan. This book is a shorter science fiction fantasy novel. It is one that I gave 3.5 stars. It's basically set in this world where the whole universe, like the whole planet, is constantly moving towards the direction of driftwood, which is the, the place where countries and communities go to die. Basically, they dissipate into nothing and their entire culture disappears. And we see so many different kingdoms and cultures and their different ways of worship and the different skies they see when they look up at night and the different customs and cultures. And we follow some people who kind of go through the community and, and have different missions. And there's a lot of storytelling within storytelling in this story because a lot of legends and stuff have lived on, particularly surrounding one man who has lived through many generations of driftwood coming in and out and seen many, many kingdoms rise and fall. But he's like one of the only people who stayed alive for that long to be able to even witness the shit in the first place. And he's basically gone into hiding or he's missing or he's dead. No one really knows. So we're following a bunch of these characters as they're trying to figure out what the fuck happened. I enjoyed this. I thought it was a really original, creative apocalypse story that did a lot with exploring different races and nationalities of fantastical peoples. So yeah, 3.5 stars. That is the mid-December wrap up. I, <laughs> the, I, that last book I finished on December 18th and then I kind of had a break where I didn't really read much of anything, mostly because I was traveling and I wasn't really reading as much when I was traveling. I was mostly sleeping on the plane and <laughs> it kind of took like a week off from reading that much and then I started back in again. But once I started back in again, I started reading romance and it didn't fucking stop. <laughs> it did, the romance kept happening. Actually, let me go look at my stats. I made a story graph. It's also a sunny book nook, but I don't think I'm gonna use it in the same way that I use Goodreads because I think it'd be kind of ridiculous to try to update both apps at the same time. I think I'm just gonna export my data from Goodreads and upload it to Storygraph at the end of every month so I can look at the stats because the stats feature on Storygraph is really cool to me. In the entire month of December, I read 14 books and it says here that Nine of them were in the mood of emotional, five of them in the mood of lighthearted, four of them in the mood of reflective, four in the mood of funny, one in the mood of inspiring, one in the mood of informative, one in the mood of hopeful, one in the mood of dark, one in the mood of challenging. Anyway, yeah, these are inspiring. I think there's overlap here because I don't think that all adds up to, that's not a mutually exclusive pie chart. So in terms of pacing, it's saying that I had 43% slow books and 57% medium books, no fast paced books, which makes sense. I feel like I read more slower medium paced books anyways, just in general. 38% was less than 300 pages long and 62% was 300 to 499 pages. But most of the books that were within that range were I think short story collections probably. 100% fiction, obviously. So it looks like in terms of like genres, nine out of 14 of these books, LGBTQ genre, and eight out of 14 of the books of these books were in the romance genre. Yeah, that's gonna be discussed in my next wrap up video. Four of these were historical and most of them were within the historical romance category. And three were science fiction. Yeah, it makes sense I talk about those right now. Three were contemporary, two were short stories, two were literary, two fantasy, one young adult, one science, one crime. Again, this isn't mutually exclusive because a lot of these books straddle a couple different genres. I gave one two star, two three stars, four four stars, and seven five stars. <laughs> you'll see, you'll see why when, I, and I think this also rounds up my 4.5 ratings, but you'll see when you watch my romance video. In the books that I did talk about today, out of the six of them, one of them was written by a man, five of them were written by women, three of them, maybe four of them were written by queer people or out queer people. Three of them were written by people of color, particularly women of color. Those are my stats. That's the info. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next video. Bye. <laughs>